Hey guys, okay, working on this uh, 2007, I think, uh, Caterpillar 301.8C. Um, and I've been having sort of a recurring leak for the last about year, and I just could not find where it was coming from. Like, I basically under these panels here, I had uh, hydraulic oil just everywhere. I'd have to put hydraulic oil in every once in a while. I was getting lots of leakage happening underneath here, so it'd be all over the, all over the, you know, the the tracks there and the hoses, and it'd be on the turntable and be dripping on the ground. So, I uh, got some free time here in the winter for machine maintenance, that type of thing. So I pressure washed the whole machine with the hot water pressure washer, degreased everything, got it all really nice and clean, so I could see where the leaks were coming from. I uh, got it in the shop here, started up, moved it around, activated all the hydraulics, and couldn't find it uh, easily. Anyway, so hopefully this helps you guys out. I actually found that the leak was coming from this solenoid valve right here. So what you're looking at there is the 12 volt uh, valve that activates um, or basically switches the hydraulic fluid from the blade to the track retraction or extension function. So on this machine, you can actually retract the tracks uh, down to the width of the machine, and that's done via a hydraulic valve. And what you do is you activate this switch right here in the cab, and what it does is it, it changes the flow from going to what would normally be your blade when you activate this handle, uh, to the to the cylinder that pulls the tracks in and out. So I only noticed it was leaking, obviously after I pressure washed everything, this was just caked in, like this whole compartment was just caked in, in uh, debris and hydraulic oil and, and just grease and nasty stuff. But you can see there, just from me operating it for like a few seconds, there's a crack in the actual uh, hydraulic actuator there. And if you undo this top knob, Okay, and pull your switch off, or your wire off. Pull this off. All that is is the uh, the magnetic block. And then right there, you can see it was leaking, or it is leaking. See that sort of shiny brass area? There's like a very fine hairline crack. And whenever I activate the blade, it just it basically just oozes out of there. And you know, over time, like. That adds up to you know a half a liter a day, and then a liter a day, and then all of a sudden it's leaking all over the place. But it's all coming from that one little spot. So I just called Toro Mont Cat, and hopefully I'm going to be able to get just the post because if I can unscrew the post uh, with this nut here, it, the whole post should just come out because all it is is just a valve. Um, so if I can replace that, that would be ideal. So once we get the part, I'll. Uh, show you how to replace that. And actually what I might do right now is I'll run the machine and just show you guys how it's actually leaking. So if it's happening to you, you can, you can sort of diagnose it. Okay, so I'll dry it off for you guys before I fire up the machine. But actually if you do this, you can actually just see, if you watch right at that brass spot, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but all of a sudden you'll see a little bit of liquid started to come out right at the base of the brass ring. There it is there, I think. And then when you start the machine, that gets a little bit more dramatic. So we'll just start it up quick. There's no one function that makes it happen over another, oh, except maybe when the, uh, the block is on the uh, post sticking up and it activates it. But just running the machine, you know, moving the blade up and down, moving the arms causes it to leak quite a bit. So let's just fire it up here.
So actually, yeah, that really does it there. So when I activate the the electrical function to switch from blade to track retraction, it really makes it leak. So yeah, we'll wait for the part. Um, but first what I might do is I'll actually see if I can remove that. We'll see what that looks like, just that, uh, that post. that on there. Oh yeah. Okay, so it looks like it's gonna make quite a mess when we pull that out. So I'm just gonna grab some cloths. In there. Yeah, I'm wondering if I can. Actually, it doesn't appear to be leaking which is nice. Okay, so we'll leave that and we'll see if we can get just this part here. All right guys, we're back at it here. Uh, finally got the parts in. So basically this I found on the internet. These, or this is the, uh, this is the Rex Roth part. Um, so this is the one that came out of the machine that was leaking right there. And this is the, electrical sort of solenoid actuator for it and so these are all this is all the specifications of it and i called caterpillar and they wanted basically this this you had to buy this whole thing and then you had to buy the whole uh block that's on the machine so you would have had to take that out super big pain especially because this is the only thing leaking um so i did some searching i got onto parker's website and i was able to cross these and came up with uh, this particular valve here. So this is the DSL 083 series and we're going with uh, 083B because we need that configuration right there. So as you'll see with the Rex Roth valve, um, you need that configuration so that it, it does the proper sort of functions when you activate the switch and directs the fluid in the right direction. So that happens to be this one. So I ordered that and here it is. So like, I mean like Caterpillar wanted, I think like eight, $900, something crazy for the whole block. Uh, these valves, this valve was around a hundred dollars Canadian. And then you can't use the old actuator. You have to use this new one here um, that works with Parker valves, but it's not a big deal. It's still 12 volt. Um, and this is the sort of wiring uh, interface. So your wiring, I'm going to cut the Deutsch connector off. The wiring is going to go into there and then this thing just screws onto the side. So we'll get into doing that to show you guys. And yeah, you can save a lot of money doing it this way. I mean, it's, it's the same valve, if not better. Um, you just got to do a little bit of wiring. And for me, it was a little bit of research, but for you guys, if you have the same machine, that's the one you're looking for right there. So let's get into putting it back in. Okay, so we're back at the machine. We'll just uh, get some of these rags out of here. And the new valve should screw into the same spot. And the only difference is it's got a different size um, wrench. This is 7 8 And just this off, get that ready. And we're just gonna cut this wire. So this is just a ground and a positive when we activate the switch. Cut that and we'll go get the new block. Okay, so this is the connector. This is the connector for that style of solenoid. So you've got this rubber gasket here that goes on like that. 
And then you've got your sort of wiring block right here. So you can have up to four leads on that. So we'll just be using the two, probably this one and this one, or you can use that one and that one. Um, and this is like a little cover housing. And then this screw screws into the uh, solenoid to hold it on. And then if you're using round wiring, you can unscrew that and it would the wiring would go through there. Um, so yeah, let's get that wired up. I'm just gonna strip the wires, put them in there, and should be good to go. Okay, so start by stripping our wires. Need much. Okay, put this over. See if it'll go on. Yeah, I think it'll mm, be tight. Yeah, we're gonna have to put it on like that in that position there, because it has to get by this. Yeah, so that's pretty much the only way it can go. Okay, so just gonna wire up our little block here. It's just ground and positive. It doesn't matter which one's which. And if you were really concerned, you could hit the ends of these with some solder so they don't mush down, but I don't think it's super necessary. Okay, so that's in there. So we're gonna put that in like that and then it'll be boom, boom onto there. Just gonna grab that screw we dropped. So that screw's gonna go through here. Let's pull the wires through first. Pull our wires in, screw on, and a little weatherproof cover. And I guess we'll go, I guess we'll let this hose go over top. Just like that. Okay, that'll work. So we'll take that out to secure this. Tighten that down, which is nice. This holds it on to the solenoid. Okay, and actually, yeah, it might be better like that. All right, and we'll put our nut on. Let's grab a wrench for that. It's basically just holding that solenoid down. Good there, it's still a little loose so it can move around. We'll zip tie that to this hose, put a new zip tie on that. So you can hear it. So key on, this has to be down. And this is the switch here. So that's the switch sound. And this is the actuator sound.